We're gonna make a square bill today. So the goal for today's video is going to be 3D printing our own square bill lure. And when I'm done with this, you guys are gonna be able to print this and fish this yourselves for free, of course. This is an early prototype I have. It swims good, weights good, but uh, the lips uh, leaves a little bit to desire. It's too thin and breaks very easily. So we're gonna correct that. First part of this video, we're just gonna go over a little bit about the lure, how I made it, and then we're gonna get into an assembly guide for this so you guys can fish it yourselves. I have a bunch of other lures I made that you guys can also print and fish yourselves for free. There's something there you guys wanna see that I didn't make yet. You guys should leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to make it. So we're going to get into the how I made this lure and give a little bit of background on how it swims. So we're going to model this bad boy out on Fusion 360 and I'm going to print it out on my Ender 3. I don't really use square bills too much, but I'm sure some of you guys will get good use out of this thing. These lures aren't made just for me and being that this is probably one of the most popular bass hard baits of all time, I'm sure one of you guys will get good use out of this thing. I will be using these more after I have this design fully made and I can print a batch anytime I want. So if you're not familiar with square bills, their most popular application is bouncing them off of rocks on the bottom in deep-ish water. That square lip really helps them get a good bounce off rock piles. I often see overlooked in these baits is that square bill has a pretty big effect on the action of this lure. Uh, blah blah blah, a bunch of sciencey stuff I don't really understand. That square bill makes the action of the lure a lot wider and gives it a lot more wobble than having a rounded lip. So even if you're not bouncing this thing off of rock piles, it's gonna have a totally different action than say a jerk bait or some kind of just uh, normal crank bait. I'm also gonna make this thing relatively slow floating so it can be worked down deep and stay deep longer. You guys won't have to work it as quick, especially when it's cold out. For the lure design, all I did was make a two-dimensional drawing of the outline in Fusion 360, and I used their sculpt environment to model out the body. I threw in a little gill plate just for funsies, and I made a cutout for a stick-on eye. I'm a big fan of the stick-on eyes. They look better than anything you're ever going to paint on. Plus, I really believe the fish can see the details in the eyes, and usually that's what the fish is aiming for when it attacks. So there's also a cutout in there for the 6 millimeter eye. So then all I had left to do was I made a cutout for the hook hangers, made two weight holes in the bottom of it, and cut out an air chamber in the top. The lip took me a couple tries to get the right thickness. It's a balance between action and strength. But all I did was design the lip and then attach it to the body and then split the body into two halves. So that's it for the design portion. We're going to go over some basic print instructions just so you guys print this out the same way. I want everyone to be able to print this as close to possible as I did, just so the weight distribution and the density is the same, that way it has the same action. And you guys, of course, can tune it from there, but we're going to get into the print details now. So for print settings, we're not going to go over printer-specific settings, but just the settings that matter specifically for this lure. Now this lure is designed to be printed out of PETG. If you guys want to use the exact same filament, I'm using the Overture brand in white. I'm printing this on my Ender 3. So this is designed to be printed at a 0.12 millimeter layer height. I'm not using supports. You guys can if you can get them to work. The little hook hanger holes do not come out well with supports in my experience. For the settings for this lure, I'm going to recommend an infill percentage of 35%. That's what worked best for me, weight to strength ratio. And for the wall top and bottom layer counts, those are the layer line counts, I use seven for all of them. You guys use all these settings, the lure should float and swim, dive the same way mine does. And you guys can feel free to tune it from there. I recommend printing it with these settings just to start out with. All right, so our print is now done. We are gonna get into the assembly guide portion of this video. So we're gonna go over everything you're gonna need first and then we're gonna put them together. All right, so the first step, you're gonna need some kind of adhesive to glue the two halves together. I'm using epoxy, uh, DEVCON two ton. You could probably get away with super glue for something like this. Now to go along with the epoxy, you're gonna need something to brush it on. Use a brush like I'm using, a butter knife, toothpick, popsicle stick, whatever gets the job done. You're gonna want some paper towels, rubbing alcohol, in the highest concentration you can get is very good for wiping down the seams and you're done. 
You just dab a little bit of that in the paper towel and wipe the edges of the lure down and that epoxy should come right off. It's so all everything together while the epoxy is setting. I'm just using these little bar clamps. These things are dirt cheap. All right, now the actual lure parts, number one, pretty self-explanatory. These are quarter inch stainless steel ball bearings. You can find these anywhere. I got mine off of Amazon. Now I'm using, I guess, an untraditional method for our hook hangers. These little guys are figure eight hook hangers. These are what actual lure makers use to put their baits together. I think a thousand count of these are 16 and change. You just have to do a phone sale with them because they're literally supplying like huge lure manufacturers. Like you get order quantity discounts and the millions there, but they do small orders too. So these are size four. You can just pick up a couple hundred of them. I will leave a link to their website in the description. So I'm gonna show this off as best as I can. You're gonna take your little hook hanger and the open end goes in first. It's, I'm sorry if I'm showing this off bad. It's super tiny and hard to get on camera. And these literally just press into the cutouts in the front, middle, and back. Just push them in, they should stay there. And you want one in each of these, obviously. That's what it's gonna look like with those all pressed in there. So then after that, we're just gonna take two of our ball bearings and put one in each hole. Now these holes are designed a little bigger just so they can rattle around a bit. And you just put the epoxy all around. You wanna make sure you get it on every edge and cover every edge completely. If you don't, then the bait will absorb water through those gaps. It'll fill in the air cavity in the top and it'll start sinking and it won't swim right. So after we put the epoxy on, you literally just put these together. You're gonna to wanna to move these to the center and just center these out. The little hook hangers, they might be a little one side. And then you're just gonna put a bar clamp around it to hold it together. All right, so our epoxy is now mixed up. I'm gonna do this trying to block your view as little as possible. Just gonna take some with our brush and brush it on our bait. You can avoid getting it on the ball bearings. That'll let the rattle work better, but a lot of times you can just smack it against something. It will break free as long as it's not like filled with epoxy. You wanna get a lot on this top seam too. You're really just trying to avoid water intrusion with this. And make sure you get it in all the little holes for the hook hangers. So that looks good for that. Also, like to take the other half that we're gonna stick together and then just glob some in the other side of the hook hanger holes. I don't know how necessary this is, but it makes me feel better, so we're gonna do it anyway. All right, so our two halves are glued up. We're just gonna stick one on top of the other. I'm trying to do this one-handed in film, so it's a little difficult for me. All right, now we have all this epoxy squirting out the seams. So all we're gonna do is grab a paper towel, pour a little alcohol on it, and if you just rub it down, it'll take most of that epoxy off. All right, that looks good enough for me. So all we're gonna do is take our little bar clamp, and press that together. That might squeeze some more epoxy out, so you can just run it down that one more time. That's what that looks like. And we're just gonna put this to the side to dry. You wanna make sure both halves are squared up but I'm gonna do the rest of these and then we're gonna wait 24 hours for this epoxy to be fully cured and we will see you guys then. So, these are now done, they're all dried up. We are gonna start on the paint. I don't really have a plan for the colors here. So we're gonna start out with a silver base in the bottom and then we're just gonna go from there, we're gonna wing it. We're gonna try gold for the top in one of these. All right, for this one, we're gonna do a purple. So we're going for like a nighttime color, this one. Blurple is one of my favorite nighttime color patterns. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna blast this one with some red.
final top color, I picked green. It's like this metallic green. I think it'll look pretty cool. So we're gonna stick some eyes on here and do our clear coat. Now the reason this took so long is because I set up a whole new clear coat method. So now, rather than dipping it in something, we are going to use a UV resin and cure it that way. That's what these look like with the eyes on. So I just have this cheapo UV resin I bought off of Amazon. You don't have to use this for a clear coat. Lots of people use epoxy. I think the standard now is a Devcon 2 ton. Some people dip it in KB diamond coat. All we have to do is brush this in. That looks even to me. I'm gonna go hang this in the drying box. All right, so I'm gonna finish clear coating all of these and putting the eyes on, and I'll see you guys when that is done. All right, so these things came out pretty good. They got a nice shine in that clear coat. I think that really paid off, changing up that method. Now, obviously you guys can print these out and paint them however you'd like. I mean, I am interested to see what color patterns you guys come up with. These swim pretty good. I'm happy with the way they swim. They are a little slow floating, as I mentioned. If that's not something you're into, you guys can feel free to tune the weight a bit. If you guys have any questions on how to make these, anything I wasn't clear enough, on in the assembly portion of this video. Just comment it down below and I'll do my best to give you a good answer. That's it for this one. If you guys want another lure that I haven't made yet, feel free to suggest it down in the comments below and I'll do my best to make it. You guys could just click away now. Or, or you guys could check out the rest of my videos and get yourself another free 3D printable lure. I think you should do that one.